Welcome to Mastering Photography Skill Sets. I'm Pierce Stevenson, and thank you for checking out my new YouTube channel. Now, I wasn't planning on going live with things until the end of March, but some of you have already found your way here through the grapevine, and that's great. But please bear with me as we get things up and running. I promise you, it'll be worth it. I'll be sharing with you a wealth of information, from basics made easy, to fundamentals of light, posing, portrait and commercial, to underwater photography, and of course gear, and to advanced skills that took me years to master. In the meantime, check out my channel description for a summary of this channel and my credentials. And of course, subscribe today so you can hear about all the new exciting content that's coming. Today I'm going to leave you with a little teaser to tide you over. So let's get started. Now you might have seen this alien abduction picture just over my shoulder uh, before when I was talking. Um, that was actually a gallery print that was hanging uh, at a gallery here in town for about a year. Um, the image was taken, though, at um, the After Dark convention um, in Madison, Wisconsin, about three years ago. It was a program I was teaching um, on low-light photography. And in actuality, it's actually a fairly simple setup. Um, and I want to run you guys through today what we did. Um, so we started off in this alleyway. And what I did was actually just do a, sh a, a shot of the whole scene on a tripod without anything in there because I wanted to be able to sample in the background and the parts that we had to cover up. Because um, we were going to do this live, and um, I wanted to try and make it as simple as possible to um, composite in the, uh, the pieces that we were missing. Um, so this was that scene, and um, it's just a beautiful alleyway. The backlighting that you're seeing back here is actually uh, just a motion sensor light above a doorway that's uh, already there. So we were using that as our background separation light for this scene. Now, here is the shot that we set up with our model. And I left our set, my settings on the side over here for you to be able to refer to. Um, so this is a little bit higher ISO, 1600 ISO, shot on a Canon 5D Mark III, um, 160th of a second at f5.6 uh, with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens shot at 16 millimeters. Now, there's a lot of depth of field with a wide angle lens like that. Um, so even though it seems like our depth of field travels very far into the scene, our focus travels really far, I'm still only at f5.6 because it's such a wide angle lens. Um, our model here is actually on a tripod, uh, not a tripod, excuse me. Our model here is, uh, is on a, a ladder and we've got a cushion underneath her for her to lay on, uh, actually a couple different pillows that she's laying on to, to try and help support her, which still was not very comfortable. She was, she was really quite the trooper. Um, and then two of our other attendees are, are just holding her in place to try to help, help her support her in that position because it, it is not comfortable and it was not comfortable for her to be in that position, but she did an amazing job. Uh, and apart from the white nightgown she's wearing, we've added to the fabric with a simple bed sheet. Um, to complete the kind of the draped effect. Uh, but by not moving the camera, this should have been a very easy shot. The problem is my big feet bumped the tripod and everything did shift. And if I come back here and you look at the picture without anybody in it, our sample image for the background versus this one, you can see the shift. So what should have been a very easy composite because everything lined up perfectly took a lot more work because all the perspectives were a little bit off and I was able to do it but it ended up being probably about an hour of artwork that, should, that was totally not necessary. Um, so yeah, if you have smaller feet, you probably would have been in a much better shape than my size 13s. And then that's our final image. Now, if we look at this closely, let me go back here to our shot with our ladder and our two, our two spotters in here compared to our final image. What I was able to do was sample the background where they were in, uh, covering up and use that to very easily mask them out and drop in the background once again. What I did have to do was cre recreate the shadow because part of their shadow was obscured, her shadow rather, was obscured by the ladder and by our two spotters in that picture. So it took a little bit of recreating for that part. Um, and we also dropped in um, the spotlight effect of our lights from above. Now, the light on her is actually two of these LED lights. They're Amaron AL198s um, by a company called Aperture. And um, they're fairly powerful, actually. Um, we use two of them in order to bring down the backlighting from 
this bright spotlight back here uh, over the doorway. That was really what determined how, how much light we needed to put on her, because the more light we put on our subject, the more we can bring down the exposure in our background and key shift the exposure darker. So we ended up using two of those LED lights to light her with. Now, if you notice in the original here, there are no light streaks, because there's nothing for that light to hit between the fire escape where my assistant is holding the two lights and our subject. So what I did was come into Photoshop and actually uh, draw in using white and blending it back in with, uh, with opacity, um, those light streaks. And we had, then I'd simply come through and erase part of the light streaks in certain areas with a very, uh, a very opaque brush to create uh, that streaking effect. Um, and then change blending modes into a lighten or um, a screen mode so it becomes more opaque and blends through into the background. So it's really a very simple technique. Um, so it appears like the light is, uh, is, very, is visible coming down from above as if from an alien spacecraft coming to abduct her. Um, so that's really it. And then coming through and playing with the color saturation and the shading of the, of the whole overall scene as compared to our, our original. So a very simple setup. Um, just two LED lights and one motion sensored light above a doorway. Uh, that's it. We didn't bring any other lighting with us. No, there's no strobe. There's no flashes. There's really nothing but ambient light for the fill light in this in this scene. So future videos will be video tutorials. Okay, I won't be doing a whole lot of of these uh, tutorials with simply simply with before and after images. There may be some. But uh, the majority of what I'll be posting will actually be video tutorials for in the future. And uh, stay tuned. Okay, so there was a lot of concepts that I brushed over in that sneak peek that we'll be delving in depth into in, with upcoming videos. Things like key shifting, controlling depth of field, controlling your exposure, lens choice, low light photography, alternative lighting techniques, how not to kill your model. So subscribe today so you don't miss out and I'll post the information on the LED lights we used uh, in the video description for you guys. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you soon. And until next time, shoot to fail, because that's really how we learn, not by our successes, but by our failures. This is Pierre, and until next time.